Hey, welcome back to Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy. So right now, it's hard to tell who the hell the big bad of the MCU actually is. Jonathan Majors is out, but there are rumors that Kang is still going to be the villain, but now teamed up with a second supervillain. So, who could this be? Well, we think it could be a member of the Fantastic Four, Reed Richards. But Reed Richards is a good guy. Yes, but he is not a good guy in every single universe. One of the all-time greatest Marvel villains is a variant of Reed Richards that would be the perfect co-big bad for the multiverse saga. And actually, this is is the best way, I think, to kind of wean Marvel off of Kang the Conqueror. And I want to announce these brand new X-Men parody t-shirts at our merch store. We have the X-Fist Club, like the Breakfast Club poster, but with the team wearing 80s gear. Nighthawks, done as the 90s X-Men. And we have Doug as Wolverine in the MCU Savior shirt. Thank you guys for supporting us and shopping our merch store so we can make videos like this one. You are the best. So, Reed Richards has really never been done justice in the movies. In the comics, he is the smartest man in the world. A genius inventor, an explorer, who constantly wants to gather knowledge to improve the world. But what makes him a superhero is the size of his heart. Reed cares about people. He spends years trying to cure Ben Grimm of being the thing. He's a doting father, a loving husband. If the Marvel Universe had a Thanksgiving dinner, Reed would sit at the head of the table. So of course, the daddy of the MCU will be played by the internet's daddy, Pedro Pascal. Pascal is a great choice because he specializes in playing these emotionally distant, aloof characters who also happen to have a soft spot for children. Just as Reed's intellect makes him emotionally aloof at times, but he's always there to tuck in his kids at night. So if he's so good, why would he be a villain? Well, simple. Reed didn't have children in every universe. In fact, there is a version of him from the Ultimate Comics universe where he starts off good, but becomes a full-on villain. Ultimate Comics? Like what? Like the best comics? No. Ultimate Comics were a line of Marvel comics in the late 90s that reinvented the Marvel universe, updating them to modern day. Actually, most of the Marvel movies were based on the Ultimates version. Sam Jackson and Nick Fury first appeared in the Ultimate comics. And the Ultimate Universe is also called Universe 1610. Person, I think it's time we set this place on fire. No, why? Why, why would we do that? Because it's boring in here. We got the same old stuff, all the old posters. Well, we, we could redecorate. Yeah, or we could set it on fire. Or... How about this? Wow, that is so cool. What is that? This is a new texture poster from Display. They're the sponsor of this video. So look, you guys know Display. We have been talking about them on the channel for years, and they are by far one of my favorite sponsors. Like, I love movie posters, and when I find a poster that I think is special, I want to hang something that is high quality, like this poster. This is a brand new product from Display, and it's called Textra. Now, what makes this special is it has actual 3D contours, selective matte, and gloss effects. Anakin and Obi-Wan are embossed from the surface, and so are the bursts of lava. Or check out this map of Middle Earth. I love this. There are tactile textures for the mountains, the rivers, and the trees, so it's like a topographical map of Middle Earth. Displate texture designs will be available on hundreds of the best-selling displates. They have posters that are officially licensed by Marvel, DC, Star Trek, and of course, Star Wars. Like guys, look at the detail of this dragon. The stained glass is raised like a real stained glass window. Texture is perfect for me because when I buy a displate, I want a high quality poster that will last. These durable metal posters mount up with magnets, no drills or nails, so they're very easy to hang and switch out when you want a change of scenery. Each displate is signed by a master of production and has an estimated delivery time of just four to five days. Plus, displate is carbon neutral, so buying a displate is good for your environment and for your study. So now, if you click our link in the description, you can get your new texture design today. So Doug, do you still want to burn down the entire store? No, I am too taken in by the sheer beauty and elegance of these affordable display posters. Thank you, person. And thank you, displate. So, Ultimate Reed Richards actually had a slightly different origin than the 616 version that we know. Now, in the classic origin, Reed and the other three want a journey to the stars in an experimental ship that Reed has built. They're bombarded with cosmic rays, and they get powers. But, in the Ultimate comics, they had their origins reworked slightly. The experiment that caused their powers was from traveling to a parallel dimension instead of space travel. Reed's childhood was also significantly sadder, growing up with a family that didn't really get him. This Reed was a child with a genius level intellect whose only friend is Ben Grimm, the overprotective jock. He's recruited to work with Dr. Franklin Storm at a young age, where he meets Storm's two children, Sue and Johnny. He still forms the Fantastic Four, complete with their own version of Doctor Doom. Now, the 616 version of Reed and the Ultimate version of Reed are alike in many ways. Reed's powers give his body hyperelastic properties, so he can stretch, grow, and reshape his body in an almost endless number of ways, anything from stretching his arms to shaping his body into a perfect ball. But Reed Reed's real power is the fact that he's considered the smartest man alive, and his tech is typically the kind of stuff that solves most of their respective universe's problems. Focusing on a science-based superhero is also interesting because of one specific detail in the upcoming film. 
its time period. The film is set to take place in the 1960s. This places the movie in the same time period as when Jack Kirby created the team. Director Matt Shackman's previous work on WandaVision is a love letter to period pieces, and he is a fantastic choice for the role. So how are we gonna go from the 1960s to the rest of the MCU? Can do like more people, popsicles? Well, Marvel's already given us the answer, the multiverse. Marvel uses the concept of the multiverse as a means to rewrite existing characters or to tell new stories. Each universe gets assigned a number for the sake of organization, and we've already seen a few of these in the MCU. Earth 616 is the main universe. Earth 838 appears in Multiverse of Madness. Our universe is 838 and we've designated yours 616. And Earth 1610 is the home universe of Miles Morales. Parallel universes can range from wildly different to near exactly the same. Uh, good to know whatever Earth you go to there's always a big belly burger. Recent MCU films have clearly been relying more and more on the multiverse as a plot device. After all, we're in the multiverse saga, and that's precisely how they're going to bring the Fantastic Four into the fold as well. The setting of the Fantastic Four film may not just be in a different place chronologically, but also dimensionally, which is why our new Mr. Fantastic looks nothing like the one that we met in Multiverse of Madness. So Jim Halpert's the bad guy? Not quite, but you're right on track. There is a very specific version of Reed Richards that fills the role. Reed Richards of Earth 1610, the maker. This Reed Richards comes from the same universe is Miles Morales, better known as the Ultimate Universe. Ultimate Reed Richards eventually took on the name The Maker. The Maker's stretching powers are different from Reed's because he is able to create separate entire copies of himself from his body. These copies can then function independently and in several places at once, including different universes. This Reed is also much smarter than his 616 counterpart because he's able to stretch the size of his brain to increase computing power to near limitless potential. Things begin to change for this Reed when the Ultimate Universe gets rocked by the Ultimate event, resulting in the deaths of dozens of Marvel heroes. In the aftermath of the event, Reed proposes to Sue, but she rejects him. The team breaks up, and that's when things take a dark turn for Reed Richards. All those smarts and I never thought to try therapy? Well, neither did Batman. Ultimate Reed's outlook becomes much darker and more jaded. He fakes his death and orchestrates the death of his family as a cover-up, claiming that he no longer cares for his home universe. This is an extremely wounded man who is responding to loss and rejection by cutting off the world in favor of the one that he would rather make from scratch. The Maker creates The City, a sentient utopia populated by superhumans where time also passes faster than the outside world. His goal is to use the city to eventually perfect the world around him, simultaneously creating both his base of operations and his own personal army. This is all of Reed Richards' worst traits consuming him. His desire for knowledge, his desire to help, combined with his ego and hubris, give him an insatiable desire to control everything. And this is what happens when Reed does not have any children to tether him to the rest of the human race. The Maker can literally be in multiple places at once and can use the time accelerating capabilities of the city to create his own superpowered army on a massive scale. Just like how Jonathan Majors was originally cast as multiple versions of the same Kang, you could easily include Pedro Pascal as multiple evil reads. Now there are two big options here that I'm going to discuss. The first is Pedro Pascal. Pedro Pascal is the type of actor who would sign on for this role specifically because it would allow him to play an evil version of the same character. Pascal could really explore these two sides of Reed Richards the soft-hearted dad and the cold-hearted despot. In The Last of Us, he showed us a version of Joel that was cynical and mean, but by the end of season one, he gave us a light-hearted performance that made you believe in hope. I got you. And this kind of duality is what makes Marvel villains great. I think that the name Reed Richards could be mentioned in the same breath as Loki, Killmonger, or Pizza Papa. Doctor Strange has not seen the last. The Pizza Papa! But the second option for a Reed Richards is even better. Bring back Miles Teller from the Fantastic film. Oh, but person, that movie was awful. Everybody knows that. Yes, that movie was awful, but here's the thing. The version of Reed Richards that was the maker, the one I described earlier, is a lot more like Miles Teller's character in that movie. He had a bad childhood. People didn't really get him. They had similar origins. He did dimensional travel along with Doctor Doom. That all fits. But here's the thing, guys. That Fantastic film, like, I'm sure Josh Trank had a better version of that in mind, like he said. The studio obviously took it away from him. They cut it to ribbons. It was just an awful mess. I personally never wanted to see a dark Fantastic Four film. I think the Fantastic Four should be lighthearted and fun. But let's just say that version of the film was canon. Maybe that version of the Fantastic Four were even the version that Fox planned to cross over with the X-Men. If that's the case, look, Miles Teller is an amazing actor. I mean, yeah, he was really good in Top Gun Maverick, but have you seen Whiplash? Like in Whiplash, he's basically a proto-Reed Richards. Instead of being a scientist, he's a drummer. He's somebody who hyper-focuses on drumming, but actually has all this anger and angst behind his inability to get the beat right. 
So let's talk about how Miles Teller's evil Reed Richards can fit into the multiverse saga. To begin, let's use the comics as a template. After the ultimatum event that I talked about earlier, Reed wanted to build perfect cities, perfect universes. So Reed's ideas make enemies out of his former teammates in the Avengers of Earth 1610. Multiple conflicts leave Reed with a disfigured face, so he always wears a mask. And after attempting to steal his universe's version of the Infinity Stones, he winds up in S.H.I.E.L.D. custody. How do you have these? Oh, we actually got a lot of those. After an attempted invasion from 616's Galactus, S.H.I.E.L.D. hires the Maker to monitor against future invasions from other universes. To that end, he begins wiping out entire worlds if they pose a threat to the existence of the Ultimate Universe. As the multiverse begins to eventually break down, the only Earths left are 616 and 1610. The Maker and Mr. Fantastic are able to save a handful of survivors from each Earth, finally leading to the events of Secret Wars. But around this point, the Maker decides to expand his pursuit of perfection to the other parts of the multiverse. Multiverse. His work with S.H.I.E.L.D. allowed him to be able to wipe out entire universes, making him a true multiversal threat. He's also the only person in his universe smart enough to live through a universe's destruction. So not only will he be destroying any universes that are a threat to his own universe, but now he'll want to reshape those universes into a perfect existence. Now who does that remind you of? He Who Remains! Exactly. A variant of Kang, He Who Remains, won a multiversal war with his variants, and then remade the multiverse in a way that kept him on top. But right now, in the MCU, the TVA are policing the multiverse under Loki's protection. The TVA are trying to prevent incursions, but they're also keeping Kang variants under control. I guess one of them caused a little bit of a ruckus on 616 adjacent realm, but they handled it, so we're all good for now. So now, Kang is kind of trapped. He needs someone who can help him break free from the TVA's control. Someone the TVA won't see coming. His ancestor, Reed Richards. Now do you say right now? That's right. In the comic books, Kang's real name is Nathaniel Richards, and he is a descendant of Reed Richards. So it all sort of fits together. Kang and the Maker both possess super genius intellects and have the capability of understanding quantum technologies, including temporal and multiversal travel. You two are geniuses but they share one other thing that makes them great villains, motive. The Maker and Kang have the same final goal in mind, to create a multiverse in their own image. They just use opposite methods. Kang builds his empire by conquering worlds versus the Maker, who uses science and technology to remake the worlds into something he believes is better. Now, we keep saying on the channel that it looks like the MCU is building up toward Avengers versus X-Men. So let's presume that the Maker is from the X-Men universe. After an incursion from Monica Rambeau, they put the Maker in charge of surveying multiversal threats. The Maker could then be the one who manipulated the X-Men into fighting the 616 Avengers. After all, Fox used to own the film rights to both X-Men and the Fantastic Four. At one point, they were even developing a crossover movie between the two. So it would make sense if a variant of Reed Richards existed in the same universe as the X-Men. But more importantly, the Maker would be able to break Kang's multiversal cycle. What do you mean by that? So in Loki season one, we learned that when Kang variants met each other, they eventually went to war. And then He Who Remains won this war and created the TV to maintain stability, but when Loki and Sylvie confront him, he says, An infinite amount of the start another multiversal war, and I just end up right back here anyways meaning that the multiversal war was stuck in a cycle. A variant would win, create the TVA, then die, split off the multiverse, create a Council of Kangs, and then the war would start all over again. The MCU was basically in a giant multiversal time loop. Time loops. How lovely. And it looks like that time loop was fixed in the Loki finale. Loki takes control of the timeline and the TVA keeps the Kangs under control. But there are still incursions happening. We see threats to the multiverse in What If and in Deadpool and Wolverine. And most importantly, we know all of this is leading to secret wars. In the 2015 Secret Wars comics, the collapse of the multiverse led to two universes duking it out, the Ultimate Universe and the original 616. Just like how we think the Avengers and the X-Men are going to be fighting to save their own realities. But in the comics, Doctor Doom intervened and created a new patchwork reality called Battle World, which he ruled as God Emperor Doom. Now, this is not a path that Kang has ever considered before. He always wants to control multiple timelines and not form a single planet. But you know who would form a single perfect planet? The Maker. I could see the Maker and Kang teaming up to save the multiverse by destroying it and then remaking it into a perfect new world. So they would actually make for the perfect team. I diddly ho, dream team. The Maker meets all of the same criteria as Kang while still fitting into the MCU very cleanly. He's already a formative part of the events of 
Secret Wars from the comics, but adds in an interesting twist to a character who's never really gotten the film justice that they deserve. Lately, Marvel's been really big about going back and fixing their previous mistakes. For instance, you know, we got Thunderbolt Ross returning in Civil War and Black Widow, and now he's going to full on return in Captain America Brave New World. The leader is also returning in Captain America Brave New World. Avengers Endgame tried to redeem some aspects of Thor The Dark World. Kevin Feige is very big on recognizing all of Marvel and saying, no, 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 even though that was bad, we're going to make it count and we're going to make it better. I mean, if that's the case, then look, the fan forced to film basically tanked the Fantastic Four at the box office. It made them box office poison. So what better way to acknowledge that than to take the hero from that movie and turn him into a villain? This would redeem Miles Teller, give him a great arc for this character, and it would immediately set this younger version of Reed apart from Pedro Pascal. That way, new audiences wouldn't be confused. So that's my pitch. I want to see Miles Teller, Reed Richards as the maker. Well, guys, what do you think about this theory? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe and smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy. Thank you.